this is a sheet for significant figures you may take a screenshot at a object is moved from p to r either by direct path that is directly from p to r or by the path p to q to r that is from p to q and then to r p and q are on the same horizontal level that is they are on the same horizontal level and r is vertically above q so r is vertically above q and let we consider the distance from q to r as h now explain whether the work done in moving the object against the gravitational force now against the gravitational force that means we know that the work done is equal to force into distance and since it is gravitational force is acting downwards and the force is against gravitational force that means the force must be acting vertically upward so we need to find the work done that is vertically upward and force is also vertically upward and since we know that work done is the product of force and the distance moved by the object in the direction of the force so the distance is also upwards so we need to find the work done that is upward force that is upward and the distance that is upward is same as the different path different along path qr pr and pqr so we need to explain whether the work done from pr and pqr is same so we know that the work done is the product of force and distance but since we need to find the work done that is against gravitational force that means work done that is upward so force and the distance moved by the object in the direction of the force will be obviously upward so for this work done first of all if we consider the path pqr then from path p to q to r we need to find the work done that is vertical so vertical force is acting and we know that the from p to q to r the vertical distance is h and from p to q there is no vertical distance since it is a horizontal path so the vertical distance that is h is zero while there is some vertical distance that is q to r that is from path p q to r the vertical distance is h and from path p to r the vertical distance is this much distance that is from p to r the vertical distance is this much distance and we know that p and q are on the same horizontal level so this height is also h or this much distance is also h that means from the path p to r the vertical distance that is covered is h so we know that the work done is the product of force and the vertical distance since work is vertical force is vertical so distance is also vertical so from the path pr and pq to r the vertical distance is same that is h so since vertical distance is same thus the force would be same and the work done is also same so yes the work done is same from p to r that is from this path to this path and from p q to r same work same work is done so work done is the against the gravitational force is the product of force and the distance moved in the direction of the force so work done is actually acting upward since it is against the gravitational force so gravitational force is acting downwards so force must be acting upwards since it is against the gravitational force so work is acting upwards and our force is also acting upwards and distance is also upward because force and the distance in the direction of the force that is upward so this is the definition of work then no work is done in the direction of pq since from movement from p to q the vertical distance is zero so no distance no vertical distance is covered since p and q are on the horizontal level so no vertical distance is covered and so no and so work is same in the vertical direction as the same vertical distance is covered in the direction of the force so from p to r same vertical distance is covered that is h and from p to q to r same vertical distance is covered that is h so same distance is covered that means same force is acting that means work done is the same three part b a ball is thrown with initial velocity v at an angle theta to the horizontal so this is the direction of the velocity and the vertical component of the ball's velocity would be vv and the horizontal component is vh and at the maximum height the vertical component of velocity becomes zero while the horizontal component of velocity remains constant since there is no force acting in the horizontal direction so the variation in time t for the age of the ball is shown in figure 3.3 that is the variation with height for the vertical component of velocity at maximum height the vertical component of velocity is zero then this is the graph for the 
height against time for the vertical component of velocity. Use this is for the vertical component of velocity, and if it is the horizontal component of velocity, then the graph would just be a straight line from the origin. Then use the time to reach maximum height to determine the vertical component or velocity of the ball at time t is equal to zero. So at time t is equal to zero, that means at this point, what is the vertical component of velocity? So we can use the formula v square minus u square is equal to 2s, that is the final velocity is zero, that means at this point. So we need to first find the height at this point and the time at this point, that is. But for this formula, we don't actually need the time, so we actually need the height, that is 11 meter. And since it is moving upwards, so for upwards movement, the acceleration is negative 9.81 and for downward movement, the acceleration is positive 9.81. So we need to find the vertical component of velocity. After substituting the value, we get the value as 14.69 and correct to two significant figure because for all the answers, for maximum answers, we need to give our answer to two significant figures in physics paper two, that is, it becomes 15. Final displacement of the ball at time t is equal to three second is 25.5 meter. On figure 3.4, draw the variation with time t for the horizontal displacement x. Since we know that for the ball, since there is no opposing force in the horizontal direction, so the horizontal com component of velocity remains constant. So since the velocity is constant, thus for a displacement time graph or the distance time graph, if velocity is constant, then the graph would be a straight line through the origin that is increasing gradient through the origin with a straight line since velocity is constant. So the displacement time graph would have a constant gradient from the origin because at time t is equal to zero, the horizontal component of velocity is zero. And when time t is equal to 3 seconds, the horizontal component of velocity is 25.5 meter or the horizontal component of distance is 25.5 meter. So at time t is equal to 3, the distance is 25.5 meter. So this is the straight line for the horizontal component of velocity. For the ball, the maximum height, calculate the ratio of potential energy of the ball and the kinetic energy of the ball. Since at maximum height, that is at maximum height, there is some vertical height, so there would be some potential energy and since the vertical component of velocity at maximum height is zero but there is obviously a horizontal component of velocity so kinetic energy is not zero so the potential energy is mass into gravitational field strength to height that is the vertical height and kinetic energy is called half mv square and we must take horizontal component of velocity since vertical component of velocity at maximum height is zero that means at this point is zero so by using this equation the vertical height is the vertical height from this graph is 11 meter so the potential energy for potential energy the vertical height is 11 meter and at maximum height that means when height is 11 meter that means at maximum point at this point what would be the horizontal component of velocity now we know that the horizontal component of velocity is constant so the horizontal component of velocity is constant so for a constant horizontal component of velocity, whatever the point is, that means at this point or this point or this point, the horizontal component of velocity remains constant and has a constant value. So for a constant value, we initially know that the value of time that is 3 seconds and the distance for the horizontal component of velocity, that means at this point. So by substituting the value that is v is equal to distance by time, that is v is equal to distance by time, we can find the horizontal component of velocity, that means whether the point is or whatever the point is, the vertical component of velocity remains constant or the horizontal component of velocity remains constant that is the value comes to be 8.5 meter per second so the ratio comes to be after substituting the value the ratio comes to be 2.99 and to since we need to give our answer to two significant figures thus it would be 3.0 or 3.0 as our final answer though in some parts of the question it is not clearly mentioned to give our answer to two significant figures but in most of the questions, it is obviously to two significant figures, thus it is better to give our answer to two significant figures. In practice, that the air distance is not negligible. Initially, air distance was negligible for the movement of the ball that is moving upward, but now air distance is acting. Staten explained the effect of air distance on the time taken to reach maximum height. So we need to find the effect of air distance on time taken. So for the initial case, we can see that the upward up thrust force is acting or the drag force is acting first of all the object or the ball is moving upward 
so the up thrust or the drag force is acting and the downward weight force is acting and for the second case up thrust force is acting upward weight is acting downwards and since there is air resistance acting for the second case so air since object is moving upward so air resistance is acting downward so if we consider the equations then it would be for the first case upward force minus weight is equal to mass into acceleration so acceleration would be upward force minus weight by m and since the object is moving upwards so it is decelerating that means its acceleration decreases since the object is moving upwards so it is decelerating and we know that for the moment of upward we take gravitational field strength as negative 9.81 and for movement downward we take gravitational field strength as positive 9.81 that means for downward movement the acceleration or the acceleration due to gravity is positive and for the upward movement the acceleration due to gravity is negative since the object is moving upward so the acceleration would be negative thus since the object is moving upward so acceleration decreases that means deceleration deceleration occurs since the object is moving upward so acceleration decreases and deceleration occurs and due to this deceleration the object's velocity becomes zero so as the object is moving upward so acceleration decreases since acceleration decreases that means deceleration occurs and deceleration is the negative acceleration so we take a negative sign and we multiply this equation by negative it is u minus w by m by negative sign so our negative acceleration that means deceleration becomes since deceleration is equal to negative acceleration so deceleration would be weight minus up thrust by m this is for the first case and for the second case upward force minus weight plus air resistance is equal to mass into acceleration so acceleration would be up thrust minus weight plus r by m and since the object is moving upward so acceleration decreases that means deceleration occurs and since deceleration occurs deceleration is equal to negative acceleration so acceleration would be negative so negative acceleration is weight plus r minus u by m and since deceleration is equal to negative acceleration so we replace this by deceleration that is our deceleration equation becomes this thus if we compare then we can see that for the first case and for the second case we can see that this additional force is acting on the second case thus deceleration is more and for the first case no additional force is acting so deceleration is less since this additional force is acting this w plus r so deceleration is more for the second case but for the first case only w is acting so deceleration is less so for the second case the deceleration is more and as we know that acceleration is equal to velocity by time so deceleration would be that deceleration is equal to negative velocity by this would be time not d that acceleration is equal to velocity by time and deceleration is equal to negative velocity by time and if we ignore velocity then deceleration is inversely proportional to time so since for the second case deceleration is greater thus time is less so time is less deceleration is greater thus the resultant weight and frictional force is greater that is the resultant weight and the frictional force is greater so deceleration is greater that is deceleration is greater so time is less since deceleration is inversely proportional to time the explanation would be that since the for the first case the upward height reached by the ball is this height and for the second case as we can see that the downward force increases and the upward force decreases therefore the vertical height reached by the ball decreases since the downward force increases so the vertical height reached by the ball decreases so initially this is the vertical height that is h and for the second case this is the vertical height h and as we can see that for the first case since vertical height is more thus time taken to reach that vertical height is more and for the second case as we can see that the vertical height is less so the time taken for to reach the vertical height is less so the time is less for the second case again as we can see that initially the ball is moving upward so this is the point that the ball reaches and at this point we can see that the up, th up thrust force is acting upward but for the second case as we can see that due to this air resistance the upward force decreases since the upward force decreases so the maximum height reached by the ball decreases since the maximum height decreases so that the time taken to reach maximum height decreases and for the first case as height is more so time taken to reach the height is more for the second case as height is less so time taken to reach the height is less